Now say by default you wanted to tile this result. So what you can do is go back to this blue latex and now everything is being driven by this one node, right? Um, because of that, what you can do is you can put in a transform node in here. Transform 2D and that'll take any 2D image and we double click this one and you can do uh, make it bigger times two, make it smaller times two and again if you tap spacebar in here you can kind of see how it's tiling. Um, you can actually do a non-uniform you can actually grab these little handles and do a non-uniform scale or rotate and you can actually um, let me go ahead and sit space here, you can go ahead and rotate these things around I believe, yeah you can go in here and rotate so all sorts of cool things. Now what you need to do is take this transform 2D result and start plugging it into where it's being used. If you want to see where these are all being used, you can click this once and it'll highlight where they're all going. So you can go, hey, you know what? Replace you, replace you, and replace you. And now everything's been updated through this transform 2D node. I can go ahead and save this, go back to our new graph, double click it, right click, view outputs in 3D view, and you can see even the user has been updated to have that transform 2D. Now, of course, you can expose this if you want. Um, you can expose this matrix, uh, any, any number of things. You can go ahead and expose the end user if they want to tile this bumpiness more. All right, so enough of materials. We have enough materials to kind of play with, and we've actually got a bunch in here that ship with um, Substance Designer. And actually, I probably have more than you do. I, I downloaded a bunch from live, so I might have to clean this up before we start. But um, so any of these materials if, while we're talking about it. So we've got our new graph here. This is the one we've been testing out. I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. And you can go in here and let's do a, let's go to concrete. And here's classic brown concrete. Go ahead and drag that out. Go ahead and plug these in. And that'll go ahead and update in here. If you want to play it safe, just right click, view outputs in 3D view. Here's your classic concrete. Um, if they've exposed any parameters, you can double click it. And you can see these are the channels that it allows you to have. So if we go in here to one, uh, we've got base color, norm, roughness, metallic, ambient occlusion by default. You can also change it to a spec gloss model by turning those to true. Um, you've got luminosity, contrast, saturation you can change. You can change the concrete color. Let's make it like more of a gray. So they give you a lot of options in here. And the roughness, we can make it a little more shiny if we want to. Totally cool. And of course, if you want to see this tiling, go to materials, default, edit. And go ahead and tile this up. And there's the tiling concrete. Um, so works for me. You can see you can just drag out a material in here, so that's awesome. So let's go ahead and start texturing something. So what I'm going to do is go to my desktop because I'm lazy and that's where I keep everything. And we're going to go and check out. Um, sorry about this. I don't have anything new to show you guys. I'm going to pull out this fossil that I've been using for the past million years, it seems like. And I have some stuff in here. Now, these are basically just an OBJ with some baked maps. Now, you can bake your maps in uh, Substance Designer. I'm not going to go into that, but like I said, go to Substance Designer's YouTube channel and they'll walk you through it. It's really super easy to do and there's really, really powerful. Um, but if we go to Helmet, for instance, I'm going to go into Details because I can't read this stuff. There we go. Um, you're going to see in here I have an OBJ and then I have a bunch of baked maps. So I'm going to grab that OBJ. You know what? I'm going to grab everything, but I'm going to control click that material node. Don't need that. Or that material file, sorry. Um, and I'm going to drag that into Substance Designer. Um, let's make sure we don't get too off track. So what I'm going to do is go into File, New, and we're going to start fresh. Physically based, metallic, roughness, OK. So now what we're doing is we're not making materials anymore. We've already made our materials. Now we're going to plug in an object and start applying materials to that thing. So I'm going to go into my folder here, Helmet. Uh, I'm going to grab all of these, so these are all my targets and my OBG. I'm going to grab it and drop it right onto that unsafe package, and I'm going to choose Link. Now, the difference between linking and importing is if you link something, it's going to call back to a space on your hard drive um, that you, you know, if you wanted to open up these targets in another 2D editing program, you could edit them and then it would update into Substance Designer because it's linked. Um, if you import it, it will actually take that file and plop it into your substance graph. Now that's going to make your substance graph a little bit heavy because it's including the, you know, the imported targa with it. Um, so generally speaking, I link everything. There's a couple instances where you may want to import something and have it stuck with the substance graph, but for the most part, you link it uh, and it's fine. So go ahead and hit OK. All right, everything's in there. So we now have a resources folder. I'm going to click that open. And we have a helmet, and you're going to see it has kind of a little alpha area back here in a little shape. If you double click that, that'll throw that object right here in my viewport. And just to do this really quick, turn off our grid, go to scene, edit, 
turn off our background and you're gonna see we just have um, a low res object right now. If we go to materials I'm gonna go so this one's named FPS female blend one shader group. If we go to shader uh, we are physically based so that's good and let's start plugging things in. So again these outputs are looking to be plugged into our character. So if we grab our textures here, I'm going to drag these right out and give it a second, there we go. Um, so if I double click this one you can see this is my AO and you can also look over here and see head SG ambient occlusion in its resource path so you can kind of read it in there. Curvature map, material ID, uh, normal position, and there's a couple things we need to talk about position if I remember, and then world space normal map. So these are the ones I've baked. I didn't bake in a thickness map. But if I wanted to, I could go to right here, right click this helmet, go to bake model information, and I'm going to go ahead and clear all these out. And if I want to bake a thickness map, I can go thickness map from mesh, choose it, and it's going to ask me where's my high definition mesh. Uh, I don't have one. If you want to, you can drag in your high resolution mesh right in here, and it'll load up fine, and you can say from resource, and you can go and grab it. You'll be like helmet high in here. Or you can go from file, and you can just go grab your high res wherever it happens to be. Again, I don't really have one, so I'm not going to bake a thickness map. But you can bake all of these maps right in here, and it's really fast, and um, yeah, it's it's pretty easy. And one thing I will say is probably the one you want to bake first. While we're talking, while we're in here, let's talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to do normal map from mesh. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose a high res from resource if I have it in here. And then after that one, I'm going to choose, um, if I do ambient occlusion, I can actually base this on a previously baked map. So once you're going to, you're going to set all this stuff up and you're going to hit OK and it's going to start baking your maps. Because you baked your normal map first, I can now go into my ambient occlusion and I can say, hey, this normal map you, you're asking me to use, I can go from a previous baker, use that one. So it's going to bake a normal map. This ambient occlusion is actually going to take, take that normal map and using your low-res geo, bake you an ambient occlusion map. Now you can also do an ambient occlusion map from mesh, which is going to require a high-res. Um, after that, if you want to do a curvature, same thing. You can say, hey, uh, the baker from previous baker, normal map from mesh, it's actually already plugged in by default. You can choose if it's OpenGL or DirectX orientation depending on what you chose for your normal map and by default it looks like it's DirectX um, and everything else so FYI if you want to do that um, for position maps if you want to do I think it's B sphere Ooh, I don't want to tell you guys anything lying I think it's B sphere you want to choose hmm I don't remember all axis one I got. Uh, you want to choose this one if you want to get into um, triplanar projection which we'll get into when we get into painter um, oh, and your output size as well. Um, padding. It, oh, this is where you want it to go, so you can choose the folder. Uh, and you can do, uh, this will give it a mesh with a baker name, and this will tell you, like, if you want to use uh, the baker name, use custom equals, and then you can just give it a custom name. So every time it bakes, it'll go, it'll name this thing the mesh name, which is helmet underscore normal map from mesh. And that's what it's going to name it. So there's baking in a nutshell. Uh, but I'm not going to do any baking. So let's get back to talking about this thing. Our base color. Right now we don't really have a base color. If I want to, I can go in here to base material. Drag this out. And I'll hit 3 so it's compact and just plug all these in. And this base material will actually show up on my object if I right click and go view outputs in 3D view. There we go. So now we can see everything nicely. So I'm going to start replacing some of these. Uh, and actually a lot of these are actually going to be used for wear and tear. Like my curvature map here, if we double click that and zoom in, you're going to see it highlights the edges as well as the recesses. Uh, my ambient occlusion will tell it where dirt kind of collects because, you know, where light doesn't get, dirt kind of gets in there and doesn't get blown out really easily. Uh, the material ID is going to tell it, it's going to give a mask for every single one of these colors and tell it this material goes into this slot or where this is painted, this material goes where this is painted, etc. Um, position map is just, um, you know, top, down, left, right, the position of your model. So if you actually want to see that in action, let's do that. I'm going to plug this position map right into my base color. And you're going to see, uh, let's, let's go to my base color here and change our metallic to not metallic. There we go. So that's kind of plastic. So you can see uh, if we go to the back here, it's mostly green. The top is like light blue and green. It kind of fades to this here. Um, 
If you want to break these out into individual channels, you can actually do that too. So I'm going to go over here to RGBA split. There's RGBA merge and there's RGBA split. So if we go to split, we can plug in an RGB map and we can see here's the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, and the alpha. So if I go say the green channel in here and I plug that in, if you take the green channel of your position map, it goes from white at the top of your model to black at the bottom. So if you want to do something like mud splatter, it's a great way to do that. And you can use your position map for that. And it's not based on your UVs or anything. It's actually based on the position of your model. Well, it is based on your UVs because you baked a map to have that information. But when you look at your model, it just goes black gradient to white gradient. Really, really useful. Um, and while we're talking about it, you can do RGBA merge as well. And this is useful too. So if you do a lot of combo map packing for like Unreal or something where you need like red channel is, I don't even know, let's make it up. Uh, red channel is metallic, green channel is ambient occlusion, blue channel, blue channel is metallic, red channel is roughness, alpha is uh, something else. You can plug all these grayscale images in and it'll output a custom combo map. So, for what it's worth. Uh, so anyways, getting uh, off on a tangent here. If we plug in our material ID, you're going to see when we start plopping materials on this guy, uh, we can make the red all one material, the pink all one material, etc. etc. Our normal map, right now it's not getting any normal information, so I can go ahead and plug our normal map in, and all of a sudden, our object's going to come to life. And uh, because our material ID is a little bit rough, uh, it's kind of you know, bogging that down. So I'm going to go and do an input color. I'm just going to do an input color of gray. Oops, it's not an input, sorry. It is going to be a uniform color of a middle gray. Drag that in. And now we can see our normal map. Now, our normal map does actually look a little bit wonky, and that's because this normal map was baked with OpenGL uh, included. So I need to go tell the material, edit, hey, use not DirectX OpenGL, and now our normal map, normal map looks awesome. So we've done that, we plugged in our normal map here. And if we want to do an ambient occlusion, all we gotta do is click our space bar, go into output, double click this one. Uh, usage is going to be ambient occlusion. And then we can plug our ambient occlusion right in there. And we go right click, view outputs in 3D view. There we go, we've got an ambient occlusion included in our mesh, totally awesome. So we've got our base color controlling our roughness and our metallicity. We've got our normal map custom normal map plugged in, and we've got just a gray base color in here. So this is how you kind of basically set up an object, getting it ready to kind of break our materials into the different slots and then start texturing this thing.